Eight people who will not get into heaven, but the fearful, the unbelieving, and the abominable, murderers, whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So did you make the list? Let's see if we put it in much more plain speech. It says, the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice black magic and magical arts, idolaters and all liars, they shall be co-signed in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. Lastly, it says cowards, unbelievers, the corrupt, murderers, the immoral, and those who practice witchcraft, idol worshipers, and all liars. Their fate is a fiery lake of furnace, burning sulfur. This is the second death. So these are the eight people who will not get into heaven. So it's surprising to me that the top of the list is the fearful the cowardly. So is there anywhere where fear is ruling my life? Anywhere that fear or being cowardly or wherever is against scripture because the Lord has not given you the spirit of fear, but power, love, and the sound mind is that damning me to hell, right? And so that's number one, but it also says the unbelieving. And Jesus says in John 14 and 6, I am the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to the Father but by me. So when people say that they don't want any part of God or they don't want any part of Jesus and they just want to live their life, that is what hell is. Um, all goodness is in God. So when you say you don't want any part of God, he's going to say, okay, I will leave you. Jesus says, I will um, depart from me. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. So when he says like, hey, I don't want any part of God. Cool. God's because he God is love and God is goodness. All goodness comes from him. Every good and every perfect gift comes down from the father of lights in whom there is no sh um, shadow of turning, no variableness. Right. Every good gift comes from him. So love, joy, peace, Fun, all that is going to go with him. And what is hell, it says hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. And so hell was never prepared for humans, right? But if you're like, hey, I want no part of God, cool. He's going to take um, life and love and um, strength. All that is in God because God is love. Love is not God, right? Um, so you need to know there is no love. There is no joy. There is no health. There is no perfection. There is no fun. There is no safety outside of God and outside of Jesus, right? And so when it says the unbelieving, if you believe anything else but in Jesus Christ, guess what? You have your part in the lake of fire. And that just is what it is. And so it says also the abominable, the immoral, and the sexually immoral. So any person that is practicing um, sex outside of marriage, a covenant marriage between a man and a woman that is listed out in the Gospels by Jesus Christ, um, what he listed for marriage, also in Genesis and also in Ephesians 5 and, and Colossians 3 of what it means to be in a marriage. You are sexually immoral. And that is what Romans 12, 2 says, uh, present your bodies a living sacrifice. This is your acceptable service unto God to live holy, to abstain from sexual immorality, right? Even if it's in a heterosexual relationship, if you're not waiting until marriage, that's sin. And it says all sin is unrighteousness and sin, when it concedes, it breeds death. What is death? The second death in the lake of fire. And this is also when it comes to the effeminate and um, homosexuality, right? And then it moves from the abominable to murderers. And it says those who hate in heart their brother without a cause is a murderer. Have I had hate or unforgiveness towards people? Then I am a murderer. Or if I went all the way and I actually killed someone, I am a murderer and I'm in need of forgiveness in the blood of Jesus. Right. And it moves 
from murderers to whoremongers. And it's like, what's a whoremonger? <laughs> right? Whoremongers and idolaters. So whoremongers, idolaters are people who practice witchcraft and the occult and black magic, right? Magical arts. So any person that says they are a um, soothsayer, a sorcerer, um, magical arts like um, the Enneagram, yoga, um, crystals, um, Ouija boards, um, Freemasonry, all that falls into the category of being a whoremonger, um, pla- practicing black magic. If you are um, going after astrology or horoscopes or zodiac signs, which is not astronomy, right? That's okay. But if you're doing any of these other black magical arts, right? Um, and idol worship, you are a whoremonger and you're an idolater. And even if you are a lover of self and lover of pleasures more than you are a lover of God, there's many um, idols that we have in this life. And so this is what First John speaks of when it says, little children, keep yourself from idols. If you are just having vanity when it comes to social media, when you are loving yourself with um, inordinate affections, if you are putting anything above prayer, fellowship with God, um, fasting, um, reading your Bible, any of these things, even um, entertainment, right? It says in the last days, men will be lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Anything you put before God is an idol. And also any of the occult, the witchcraft stuff that I listed out um, that comes from these other or unorthodox religions, um, Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, Taoism, uh, all the things that is not Jesus and being a follower of him, a disciple of him, it is the occult. Stay away from it. You do not want your part in the lake of fire. But also, just as um, surprising on there, liars. Liars will have their portion in the lake of fire. So am I dishonest? Am I omitting or having some type of information that I am withholding from people. And I'm not speaking with grace and truth, just like Jesus, who was full of it. Right. And then it also says, so what hope do we have? (laughs) That list is pretty long of the eight people who will go to hell. But in the self-same scripture, Revelations 21 and 7, it says, He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. So this is what Romans 8 talks about, that the Lord wants us to be begotten of him. If we confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is our Lord, and that God, and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. It says, anyone who calls on the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. So what does it mean to overcome? Like, what what does that mean? How do we overcome the world? Satan, devils, the demonic, witchcraft, all this um, unrighteousness, right? And this comes from 1 John and 5. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ, is born of God. And this is how you become a son and how you enter the adoption. And everyone that loveth him that is begotten loveth him that is begotten of him. By this, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. All right. So this is the big distinguishing factor in the scriptures. Not just say I'm a follower of Jesus or I receive him or I'm a Christian and I live as if I am a devil. No. It says those who actually love God and love people, they do what God says. And so that's the Ten Commandments. You will have no other God um, besides me. Um, You will um, keep the Sabbath. You will not lie. You will not steal. You will not kill. You'll honor your mother and your father. Um, You'll worship on the Sabbath day. Oh, my goodness. I don't know the Ten Commandments. (laughs) So these are the um, Ten Commandments, just as a base, right? It says, you shall have no other God besides me. You shall make no graven image. You shall not take the Lord's name in vain. You will keep the Sabbath day. You will honor your mother and your father. You will not murder. You will not commit adultery or be sexually immoral. You will not steal. 
You will not bear false witness and you will not covet. Right. And so it says this is the fulfillment of the law and the commandments that you love the Lord, your God, and that you will love your neighbor as yourself. And then, boom, you're keeping the Ten Commandments. So as he continues, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous unto us. For whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. But what is our faith in? Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believes that Jesus is the son of God. And this is how you will be saved, that you will believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God and believe in his finished work. And this is also Revelations 12 and 11. And they overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. And they did not love their life unto death. All right. So when we choose to become a follower of Jesus and become a disciple, there are many things um, that we are choosing. We're going to be persecuted. We're going to be hated by the world because the servant is no greater than his master. But we know that we shall overcome in the life to come and we'll have eternal life. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And it says the Lord is not slack um, as some men count slackness or he's not slow, but he is um Long suffering, he is patient, not willing that any should perish, because hell was not made for humans. It was made for the devil and his angels, but all should come to repentance. So, how do we repent? Repentance is threefold, right? Um, it is to return to God, it is to feel sorrowful for your sin, and it's also to have a mindset, a mind change, right? And the renewing of your mind. So don't be conformed to the ways of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You have to be born again. You have to receive the Holy Spirit and you have to be baptized with fire and receive the Holy Ghost. And this is the sealing of your salvation, right? And so this is our great hope. And it comes from 1 Corinthians 6 and 11. And it says, and such were some of you, <laughs> but ye are washed but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified by the name of our Lord Jesus and by the spirit of God. Once you have the spirit of God and once you receive Jesus as your Lord, his blood, his finished work on the cross, that he died for our sins, all our iniquity, all our transgressions, all the evils that we do, right? The unrighteousness that he took the wrath of God onto himself, onto the cross by his bloodshed. Through one man's disobedience, sin entered the world, but one man's obedience on the cross, um, salvation came. And the same spirit of God, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, his resurrection is the same power that lives on the inside of us and will resurrect us in the second coming of God, um, second coming of Jesus, right? And he will also have us be transformed in a twinkling of eye, right? When the great day of judgment, that terror of the Lord comes, that we shall persuade men of this gospel of like, hey, you will um, be at the judgment seat of Christ. Um, every man um, having his works judge either good or bad. Um, this is Second Corinthians 5, right? And so either we will receive the well done, my good and faithful servant, or we'll hear, depart from me, I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. So this is my prayer that if you want to give your life to the Lord, that you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You just say like simply, Lord Jesus, I repent of all of my sin. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is my Lord. And I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. And I will follow you. I will pick up my cross daily and I will die to myself and I will be a disciple of you. And I just receive your Holy Spirit, the sealing of my salvation. So this is how we know we're saved and how we are born again and how we can avoid being those eight people who will definitely go to hell and not go to heaven. So um, send this video to anyone who is not a believer. Remember to click the like button. And also, if you enjoyed this video, 
um, share this um, video and come back because um, every day I'll have a Bible study and you can go to the com or you can go in the link in our description box. So make sure that you click the next video right here where I am listing the 11 people who will go to hell for sure. Thanks for watching.